finally got the full-size version of the Core 64 back in stock. It's, of course, a little bit improved from the last time around. Basic functionality remains the same, but uh, there's a, several changes I've made to make this more accessible, more hackable, easier to understand, and I'll take you through all that cool stuff here in just a second. So first up, you'll notice that the uh, I've gone to black text on a white background. It uh, ends up making things a whole lot more readable. This is the previous version with the Teen CLC on it, and I've switched to the Raspberry Pi Pico, and I'm going to start to include the uh, W version of that with all these larger versions of the kit. Hopefully, that Wi-Fi and eventually Bluetooth version will allow these badges to become uh, connected to each other. Another big change I made was the schematic. Uh, this is all one unified sheet of schematic. You can print it as four a size sheets of paper or, you know, and then tape it together, or you could print it as one C size sheet of paper, which you can move around the whole PDF on the screen all at once and see everything. Um, Got some feedback that suggested it would be a lot easier if I did that, and I agree, it is. Uh, so I've, I've done that. Up here is the power supply section, goes through all the power. The uh, microcontroller is down here, which drives a bunch of uh, three shift registers, and the sh those shift registers turn into 20 lines of I.O. that drive the core matrix, which is all up in this quadrant. It's all the transistors and then the matrix itself here. And then the sensing, um, the sense signal processing in the matrix happens in this section here. A couple of uh, resistor uh, dividers and op amps and some logic gates. So it's really obvious here how this works when you look closely at the schematic. And then this whole section down here is all expansion and hacking stuff. Two biggest expansion options are what I call user port A, which is 30 pins of I.O., and a second user port B, which is another 30 pins of uh, mixed with I.O., analog, and some power stuff. Those are shown here, all filled in. So these are the user ports. These are... Uh, the same pins that are available on the user ports are also available in these headers, but these are specialized for some expansion options like a, um, there's an Adafruit micro SD card adapter. Uh, there's kind of your standard I squared C OLED display you can go in there. There's a more advanced color OLED display that can go up here. So this is a combination of GPIO I squared C and uh, spy bus stuff. It essentially, it, it's everything that's available from the Pico, but brought out in different ways. There is also the option to put a surface mount header in uh, to these two rows. And again, that is for another display option. In this case, this is an uh, Adafruit TFT LCD screen. It also has micro SD card slot in the back. And this can be an alternative to the LED board for displaying uh, underneath the core memory. If you want to use the, uh, if you want to go back and use a Teensy like this, or a uh, ESP8230-66 or some variant of it, or the uh, Adafruit, blanking on the name of it right now, what are these called again? This, this particular one's a Challenger RP, it's the RP2040. Adafruit has a lot of them like this. One of the cool things that I've done, I think, is to provide a hacker board. So this is an optional add-on you can purchase if you'd like. And what this does is if you remove the Pico, you can, through these two 30-pin headers, place this on top of here, and you can wire in whatever you want uh, it also has these same ports available, and there's an SAO port down here. You can add one up here if you want. This basically opens the door to doing anything. You can 
use the shift registers as the expansion, IO expansion if you want, or you can directly drive every single of one of the 20 transistors, which is driving the core matrix. You could put your, you could plug in your own core memory here and, you know, drive that as well. Uh, some project ideas I have is I would love to be able to get a four bit computer like this uh, Supercon badge running the core memory directly. And I don't know if I'll do that and maybe a 6502 based uh, control system. This is a, it's called an Emma 2, and this is a 6502 computer designed for easy I.O. access. They can plug right in there and control everything directly from that. Uh, another change I made was with the stylus. So the this um, it's not much of a change, but it makes a little bit of a difference. The previous stylus had two and a half millimeter diameter magnets. The new stylus is three millimeter. So there's a little bit more magnetic flux. So when you go to do something like uh, draw in here, it has just enough flux where it can trigger two adjacent cores. Uh, so there's a little bit of overlap, but it just allows a more flowy experience. Just works a little bit better. I'll also be offering these individually on Core64.io so that people who have the previous version can upgrade to the newer one if they see fit. Because of those changes to the board, I'll probably offer this, this part of the kit as a standalone option. So people who've previously purchased the kit, other kit, uh, other Core64 versions, could use this and swap it in. Because this is all Pico-based now, it's basically identical to the Core64C, with all the, the same code. I'm using VS Code with the Platform I.O. plugin. Makes things a little bit easier for me to develop on. Firmware that I'm working on continues to be compatible with all the older versions of the kit too. So uh, you're not missing out on any of the functionality that continues to get added. The Core64C version has just the basic Pico on it. Oh, another uh, really beneficial thing about the Pico is it makes firmware updates very easy. You just drag and drop onto a USB device. You don't have to install anything to be able to do that. Final update, which isn't really much of an update, but more of a, <laughs> just so you know, I have had nothing but trouble with the latest batches of LEDs. Um, ordered the exact same stuff, same part numbers, and the defect rate for the LEDs was tremendous. I had to rework every single board, trying to figure out a different way to source that and have somebody else take care of the inspection and rework, because that was a whole lot of work. That's the update. Uh, obviously, you can tell I'm pretty excited about it. This has been over a year in coming to be able to get to this point. I will be at VCF East in about a week. Uh, I look forward, or maybe less than a week by the time this posts. I look forward to seeing you there. I have an exhibit set up. You'll be hands on with all this stuff. Uh, you can also buy them there if you want. We've got some cool demos. Uh, you can get hands on with some core memory from back in the day. The whole point of my exhibit is just to allow you to get your hands on core memory. And if you want to go deep into it, you can buy a kit and weave your own. Thanks for listening.